How are you doing? Oh, doing okay. <laughs> I had to uh, do a little makeshift desk here. Oh, at a cardboard <laughs> and yeah. sticks. We sold the desk on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, wow. Weekend. Yeah, because you then, moved into your new place, right? Mm-hmm. And then we sold the entertainment center, which would have been the next closest desk. So, yeah, really am working on some cardboard boxes. Harry's <laughs> going to love this. <laughs> Is that a crib in the background, Jordan? <laughs> it's a day bed. <laughs> ah, there you go. It's a futon. So when yeah. Harry wants to crash, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to have a place at your at your temporary place, at your permanent place. I know. He'll uh this was supposed to be Lenny's big oh. big girl bed, but if Harry sleeps in it then <laughs> we'll just have to find a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scorched earth. You definitely don't yeah. want Lenny sleeping where <laughs> Harry slept. Oh, uh, well, I've got my best Elizabeth Holmes impression going on today. Oh yeah, turtleneck. Nice. <laughs> I'll sell you a billion dollars worth of lies. <laughs> Need to have a little bit of a deeper voice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Today we're talking with Matt Whittington. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hello. Matt. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. I see you got your Truly gear on there. Of course. You, know. you, you never take it off, right? You sleep in that, I, you go to church. This is all that. I wear, actually. My <laughs> entire closet is just this on repeat. Takes it <laughs> for the morning routine. That's awesome. From the from the Jim Cook book of life, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Once you work at Boston Beer, you can only wear one outfit. <laughs> That's true. I've never actually seen Brittany wear anything else either. So. That's funny. Focus well, on I... the important stuff. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's give you a, uh, an official welcome to BeerNet Radio. Today, we have Matt Withington, Truly Senior Director of Marketing. And actually, I was stalking your LinkedIn, and uh, you got a pretty big Ad Age Award last year, right? Can you tell us about that? Oh, yeah. Um, definitely. It was an honor. Uh, I was recognized in 2022 as Ad Age oh, okay. Marketer of the Year. Uh, for you know the work we did on the Samuel Adams brand with your cousin from Boston and returning the brand to growth for the first time in seven years. But uh, as as flattering as that was, it's honestly just a reflection of the great work that our entire team did from our creative agency. It could be to the entire Sam team, you know, including Brittany, um, who's who's on this call with us. Just uh, a, an amazing, amazing job. So yeah, it was it was a huge honor, but uh, it is not a one person sport. So. Right, right. Awesome. How how is that guy in real life? Your cousin? From oh, Boston? he's amazing. He's he's yeah. just like uh, somebody you want to have a beer with. He's he is uh, so down to earth. He's incredibly talented, and you know he's from Amesbury, Massachusetts. So he understands this character uh, mm -hmm. inside and out. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Well, we're not here to talk about that today. <laughs> we're here to talk about truly tequila soda hitting this summer, right? Yep. And so it's uh, it's been in some test markets. So we're just curious if you can give us the lowdown up front, you know, how it did in those test markets, when it launches, how it launches. Yeah. Just give us your marketing budget. We'd appreciate that too. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, well, yeah, as you know, we tested it last summer um, in five markets across the country, East Coast to West Coast, and um, it performed really well. It either met or exceeded our expectations in a very short period of time. Um, it was really well received by uh, drinkers and wholesalers um, who praised it for its taste and also just the look and feel of the product. So we were really encouraged by the results that we saw. And it was a very easy decision, you know, to bring this national in 2024. Mm -hmm. And it, when does it start shipping? Uh, it's starting now. Oh, okay. National. Yeah, it's, right. it's actually starting to, to get out on the market. It looks awesome. Uh, you know, we're monitoring social for drinkers early reviews uh, of its taste. And so far, everything's been very, very positive. And you'll see more rollout from us uh, this week on the brand too. Okay. So like TV spots and whatnot? Yeah, maybe, we've got or? a full, okay. I mean, our, our plan from a media perspective is to drive awareness, trial and engagement throughout the year for this product. So uh, what you'll see from us is dedicated media behind Tequila Soda. Um, that fits really nicely with our Keep It Light campaign. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got a very fun call to action for our drinkers on tequila to take a tequila-cation, which really <laughs> tequila soda, it really unlocks those carefree vacation vibes. So uh, you'll see that from us. You'll see that uh, also 
you know, a full support plan, including po a point of sale, uh, local marketing activities. Um, we're going to support this throughout the year to uh, ensure its success. So do you guys expect there'll be a lot of interaction between the truly regular, you know, truly hard seltzer drinkers and truly tequila drinkers? What, what, how is the truly tequila drinker different from a demographic standpoint, if it is? Sure. Yeah. Well, between, you know, RTD spirit cocktails and hard seltzer, there's high interaction mm -hmm. in the spaces. Um, but we do think this is going to give us an opportunity to, to capture an incremental uh, drinking occasion. And we really are confident that tequila feels distinct from what we offer drinkers in the core, truly uh, hard seltzer portfolio. So they're excited about it. They see the value in tequila. It's obviously growing in uh, relevance and it's on trend, especially with the younger generations of drinkers that truly uh, is also highly relevant with. So we think that, you know, while there will be overlap, we think it's largely incremental um, and feels like the right place for us to extend the brand into spirit based. Going back to the test markets, what test markets did you pick and how did you decide on those? Uh, were you doing it just off of, you know, the local area? What? Yeah, great How question. Um, it was it was a variety of factors. We really wanted to try to get a read across uh, different markets, more developed truly markets, less developed truly markets, more developed RTD markets, less developed RTD markets, etc. So we had a, we had a uh, a whole set of criteria that we uh, selected these markets on, but we really wanted to get a true read of the potential of this product. So the actual states that we um, launched this in, on the West Coast, we were in Southern California, both in LA and uh, San Diego. We were in Nevada, um, also Minneapolis, uh, Delaware, and Rhode Island. So we really had a great mix of markets um, that gave us a, a really strong read and confidence that uh, we were able to, you know, achieve national relevance if we were to to take this uh, to the whole country. So that's how we thought about that market test. Okay. And when you go into those test markets, um, how how really are you supporting the brand is it just sampling or yeah you know, it, that? it's a lot of a lot of in-store activity which also gives us confidence because we weren't running paid media uh and awareness driving tactics against this we really wanted to see if we put this in store how would it resonate so a lot of the tactical support that we put against this were just you know getting point of sale up leveraging sampling uh and word of mouth so exceeding our kpis gave us uh, again, a lot of confidence knowing that, you know, we wouldn't, uh, we, we weren't doing this with the typical sort of air cover that we would bring to engage consumers. So, you know, now that we're going to bring that for the national launch, uh, we're feeling really optimistic about the potential of truly tequila soda. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, can you talk a little, we talked a little bit about the interaction, but did you find that, um, you know, it was largely, new uh, consumers to the franchise or was there trading up mixing in how did you kind of largely new largely okay. new we actually um we we had a certain level of interaction that we anticipated could be possible uh, just knowing that rtd and hard seltzer have strong overlap but um we actually brought in a greater percentage of new drinkers than we anticipated which was also really encouraging so it was additive. We saw our trends on our core business uh, either maintain or improve as we launch this product in these markets. So uh, we felt really good about it as a, as being an incremental offering we could bring uh, nationally in 2024. I'm curious, you know, going back to the Truly Vodka brand, um, <clears throat> how old is that now? It's a year or a year and a half? Or uh, it, Yeah, launched in October of 2022. Okay. Yeah. So you know, not quite two years. Um, you know, I have noticed at least when I checked in January that had seen tougher trends. So mm -hmm. what makes you guys confident that you should be, you know, bringing a new, new brand under that banner to market? Yeah, really fair question. I, I think we're constantly looking at uh, the RTD landscape and determining what needs truly can credibly serve. Uh, with tequila, what we're excited about is it feels uh, and drinkers recognize it to be very distinct from mm -hmm. our core hard seltzer offering. So that was number one. And I think the clarity of what tequila brings um, was very clear and easy for people to think about. And I think that's why our audience had such high purchase interest in it. So, um, you know, that gave us 
sort of the confidence to bring it into the in-market test. The results of that in-market test only further validated um, what we thought was a really compelling offering. You know, the sort of the fun of tequila meets the refreshment uh, of hard seltzer. And again, that just gives us confidence to, to bring this national and also to invest um, behind its success. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very interesting. And then we kind of danced around this, but I think we're pretty interested in you guys in particular getting into the spirits RTD space, right? Because you have such a stronghold on the malt end of things. So to get into RTD spirits in a more meaningful way could be really big. Um and y'all talked about it on the call recently, the earnings call. You know, I think Spirits RTDs are about 4% of your total business. Um, but Jim Cook has said there's a lot of upside. So how does the truly Spirit RTD franchise differ from like the dogfish head consumer and franchise? And like, how do you make sure you guys maintain those lanes and you're not cannibalizing each other? How do you really look at that holistically? Yeah, um, great question. It starts with looking at it holistically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think being simple in your proposition in this space is a really good thing and being very focused. So when you look at Sun Cruiser, that's all about vodka and tea. Dogfish Head is a mix of spirit bases, but it's all about uh, bar quality cocktails in a can. For Truly Tequila Soda, it's really about leveraging the halo of the equity of the Truly brand plus um, a great tasting product. So we believe that they have clear swim lanes, you know, there's a lot of brands in this space. We have a few of them uh, at, at Boston Beer, but we do feel like they're distinct from each other um, and carry their own, you know, unique propositions. And even when you look, you know, Loma Vista was a brand that mm-hmm. yep. uh, we explored in the tequila space. I think Boston Beer has recognized the growth and relevance of tequila. And we've, uh, you know, taken a couple different approaches of how we can serve those needs. But even between Loma Vista and Truly Tequila Soda, they're very different propositions. Mm-hmm. Loma was really focused on provenance and um, a tequila origin story, where again, Truly Tequila Soda is much more about the brand uh, and the great tasting product that, that we're bringing for, for drinkers. Mm-hmm. Those um, propositions you just mentioned, they do have their own clear lane. Um, are they getting enough breathing room on the shelf though? Have retailers started to organize spirits RTDs a little more consistently on the shelf or is everything kind of stacked in one section? Yeah. um, I think, you know, talking to drinkers, they feel like, you know, aisles are bursting. uh, Mm -hmm. And the best thing that we can do is, is provide really clear, relevant propositions for them to help with just how busy that retail environment is. And in terms of helping our retailers uh, drive dollars and incrementality. So Uh, For us, again, we really tried to focus on how do we make the strongest, clearest possible proposition for tequila um, that, you know, people want to be part of from a brand that they know and trust. um, And it feels like a really logical extension for them. So um, we've got to go out there and and prove the results uh, to drive that focus and get that attention. But we're focused on making sure that our drinkers are aware that it exists, uh, getting them interested to try it and really just driving engagement uh, all year long to support this innovation and ensure that uh, it gets off to a strong start and maintains its success. But have you started to see um, retailers organize maybe just by like different spirit space or what? what is the common way of uh, organization on the shelf? I think it's still, it's still a bit early and it depends on um, it depends on which channel, which retailer, uh, and who their shoppers are. So we've we've seen a number of approaches. I think hard seltzer and RTD, especially you know um, RTD products that fit more of the light and refreshing profile, tend to get merchandised adjacently to each other. I think we're you know seeing that we compete kind of in the same spaces uh, quite often. And for us, you know, truly tequila soda, we want it to live adjacent to truly. Um, but we know that drinkers are coming into the store with, you know, refreshment and sessionability needs. And I think we're seeing that retailers are organizing around those needs, which is a good thing for us. Got it. Okay. Um, I had one more kind of overall in RTDs. We obviously know it's a hot segment, but it's still fairly small. Um, now that you've been in this segment for over a year now, where do you see the most opportunity and how much bigger do you think it can get? 
Yeah, yeah. great question. I, I think, um, well, first, what we're really focused on, and I remember talking to you, uh, uh, you both about this in the spring, what we're, what we're most focused on is the Truly brand in its totality. And what we've been saying since the Truly refresh in 2023 is that with everything that Truly creates, we want to remind our drinkers that drinking Truly is light, fun, and joyful. And that is the ultimate filter for any uh, product that we make. Anytime you see our brand out in the world, that's what we want to uh, become synonymous with. And for us, you know, Truly Tequila Soda, we felt like really fits uh, all of that. It's light, it's fun, it's refreshing. Uh, and we want to make Truly easy to think about uh, for any time you, you need something to fulfill those needs for you. So uh, that's our focus at a high level is, is building, you know, the brand around lightness, refreshment, and joy. Um, and again, Truly Tequila Soda, we think is, is one uh, important way into that. And I think our drinkers are also starting to recognize that these are logical extensions from us. So when we ask them about uh, what would they expect to see next from Truly, there's a lot of uh, conversation from them around the spirit-based space. So it feels like a very natural place for them to expect to see the brand innovate. Where do they want to see the brand innovate? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the beauty is there's a lot of places that they want to yeah. see us innovate. And um, the fun is is really figuring out which are the most relevant, which we can address, you know, uh, at the biggest scale. And we really feel like tequila uh, is something that we've been working on for about two years. Um, so it made sense that this would be the moment to, to bring this out, introduce it to them nationally. Uh, and then you never know where we'll go next. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I, that's a hint. <laughs> um, well, no, I want to go back to truly hard seltzer and talk about, you know, the big plans and cornerstones for there and the big summer selling season. I mean, it's no secret that, you know, it blew up a few years ago, got huge and it's been challenged, right? It's working its way back toward flat. So how are you guys going to try to get it back to flat, back to growth? Is uh, is lightly fantastic still the campaign? What what are we looking at here in the next? Yeah, great months? great questions. Okay, I, I would try to distill it down to a few things that we need to continue to do well. One is we need to continue to focus on our core. Um, the more we have defined and really focused on our core, um, and we have become a reliable brand where people know what the go tos within truly are, we continue to see success. So um, the green shoots that we've seen so far year to date are all around our core styles. So berry pack, party pack, um, you know, our rotator um, and our single serves. And uh, those are the skews where uh, our drinkers are starting to really understand what they can know and trust from Truly. And we're actually even seeing growth. We're up 7% on our lightly flavored core. Our core singles are up 23% in volume sales. So we're starting to see these green shoots around our core. So one is we need to continue to build uh, our core for Truly. The second is, you know, we've always been an innovative brand. And I think purposeful innovation is an uh, important pillar for us. So whether it's tequila soda or new Truly Unruly in the high ABV space, uh, finding the right innovations with needs that we can serve, we always want to continue to be innovative. Some of our brightest spots as a brand historically have been through some of our innovations. And then the third piece is just continuing to build the brand. You know, again, I mentioned everything that we do needs to be light, refreshing, and joyful. And I think if we can keep those three in balance, we'll continue to see green shoots as we transition from a brand that, you know, really built itself on bigger, bolder flavor and innovation to now a brand that has a very simple, consistent, clear promise, uh, styles that you can know and trust. And then we bring in, you know, that innovation purposely to, continue to drive news and interest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, just especially talking about the focus on the core and the light, you know, refreshment. It, it. I remember a few years ago, we were talking about a ton of interaction between light beer and hard seltzer. Do you guys still look at it that way or, or no? Yeah, we still look at interactions across, we look at interactions across every segment and we always mm -hmm. want to understand, um, you know, where are we interacting beyond what we would expect, sort of the fair share of interaction. Um, and where are we seeing higher crossover, which uh, right now one of those spaces is, is RTD. But there is, of course, a big overlap between light beer and hard seltzer. When you think of you know, the needs of lightness, refreshment, obviously seltzer brings that fun, 
uh, that more modern take on what lightness is. So uh, for us, yeah, we, we want to continue to bring people into the brand. We want them to experience what it is to, to drink a truly that lightness, refreshment and, and fun. Um, and that's our focus on continuing to, you know, keep our core fans engaged through things like uh, our, our rotator packs and, you know, all the fun innovations that we bring out, but also be really easy and simple and focused to make sure that uh, it's easy to buy truly for the first time and come into the franchise. Anything else, Jay? Um, yeah, just on seltzer, um, you know, there was a call to clean up the seltzer shelf, um, you know, after so many hopped on during its, its explosion. Um, so heading into the spring and summer now, do you think there's the right amount on shelf or is there still room to cut back? I think there's the right amount. I mean, hard seltzer experienced such a meteoric rise over a short period of time that there's still plenty of penetration, uh, new households and, and runway for this segment. So we still believe that this segment um, more broadly is still in growth mode. It's just, you know, a bit of a level set after just a huge spike, which in part was obviously driven by the pandemic. So it, it's not a normal curve when you look at how uh, segments have been developed. So we still have the mentality of um, the segment's going to grow by bringing in new drinkers into it. Um, we do think we need to be efficient at shelf as a segment. And there's um, a handful of brands that can really satisfy the needs of most shoppers. Um, but we still want to stay available uh, and visible because uh, there's still plenty of upside and, and run room for what has become a very important segment to retailers in terms of the dollars that it delivers. So it feels like it's at the right size. We've been focused on making sure that every uh, pack of Truly that we have on shelf is as productive and plays a strategic role for our retailers uh, as, as possible. So I think it, you know, it created the opportunity to kind of right size and focus on uh, meaningful innovation um, but I think, you know, we want to maintain that shelf space because of uh, Seltzer's importance and opportunity in the future. Do you guys have, see on that shelf, a right to win in NA with the Truly brand? Oh, you never know. Um, <laughs> right now, we're, we're focused, we're focused on, on, um, on a couple other things right now with our party pack, as an example. Um, you know, we wanted to optimize our mix to make sure that we didn't have any hard seltzers left in the back of the fridge. So one of our big innovations this year was the party pack. And historically, we've always organized our packs by um, flavor type, you know, berry, citrus, tropical. Um, but we hadn't offered something for everyone in a lightly flavored pack. And that's really what the party pack innovation was all about. You've got our new raspberry style in there. You've got the two fan favorites from the tropical pack in there. And then you've got uh, another fan favorite that um, we think is a fantastic uh, hard seltzer and citrus squeeze. So we were focused on that something for everyone option. Uh, we thought that was a big opportunity for us. High ABV was obviously another big opportunity for us just based on the growth there and the opportunity we saw to really sort of rewrite the rules of what people thought that high ABV hard seltzer could be, especially when it comes to taste with truly unruly. So um, those have been our, our two uh, innovation focuses. Obviously, we've got our rotator uh, mm -hmm. as well and have been seeing success there. So we got enough on our plate this year where, um, you know, we're always watching trends and seeing what's relevant, but we felt like we had a few other areas to focus on uh, in 2024. All right. Well, I guess my last one is since this is the podcast that makes all your dreams come true, TM, <laughs> uh, let's, let's go around and see you know, if you could have one wish today, what would it be? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, one wish. Um, what I think my one wish would be is that we continue to focus on what an incredible opportunity the hard seltzer segment and the Truly brand still have going forward. And I think, you know, as this period of sort of, you know, coming off of the, the absolute hype as we kind of come into this next phase, um, I want people to remain really confident in the future of seltzer and truly. And I think it's easy sometimes to just look at the top line trends and say, oh, you know, truly is is down. I mean, about 50% of that decline is things that we discontinued to be a stronger, more efficient brand in the future. So uh, I, I guess my wish is just like, hey, let's go beyond the surface. Let's look at what we've really built here. This is sort of a once in a lifetime segment that, you know, popped up basically overnight. 
uh, I want to stay committed to it because I get to talk to drinkers all the time and I know how much they love hard seltzer. I know that it feels light, refreshing and fun in a way that, you know, other categories just don't. Um, and I want this to be here for the for the long term. And that's what we've been thinking about for truly we're on. You know, we're, we're not just thinking about tomorrow. We're thinking about really building a sustainable future for this segment. So uh, let's stay focused on it. Let's stay excited about it. And uh, let's continue to give it the attention it deserves because uh, hard seltzer is here to stay. Cool. All set. Uh. Jay, wishes. Uh, oh, my <laughs> wish is easy. I wish I had a desk right now. And I wish I was in the house. <laughs> nice, nice. And I went an interview with Michael Spillane. So, you know. <laughs> oh, nice. Not I, that I don't want to talk with you, Matt. A, a desk in an interview with Michael <laughs> theme, uh, like you know, wishes we can definitely grant, and hopefully, we can grant that <laughs> right? We're, we're aiming pretty, you know, <laughs> lateral, <laughs> straightforward here. But uh, yeah, no, all good, all good. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the insights, and uh, yeah, thanks to Brittany too, who's in the background there. And <laughs> cheers. We'll be, uh, we'll check back in with you soon. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, great catching up and talking truly. You awesome. too. See you, Matt. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.